You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another epic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 739. Thanks for hanging out with us again. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the reviews. We sure appreciate every single bit of it. Yeah, we do appreciate it. Also appreciate those reviews. If you've left us a review wherever you download podcasts, we really appreciate it. If you haven't done so yet, um, now would be a great time. Okay, go. (laughs) It does help us quite a bit. It really does help us Helps us help you. Yeah, and if you have a friend who uh, should be listening to this show, just just give it a share. But anyway, um, special thank you to everyone in the Drone U community. Special thanks to our friends at GPC. I just realized I missed an email from like a month ago from those guys. Um, but uh, also special thanks to our friends at, um, at DJI, our friends at Unique, and everyone who has been a strategic partner in this company. We do greatly appreciate it. So... Indeed. Anyway, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, play that question? Let's just go right into it. Hi, I was wondering if you have any experience with propeller arrow points. Do you recommend them? Are they worth the expense? Perhaps you could do a review of them. Thanks. I love that nice, quick, concise question. And uh, so thank you. Not that we mind longer questions. No, this is pretty direct and to the point. Yeah. So just a quick recap. If you're doing mapping, drone mapping, in order to get the most accurate models possible, you've got to be using some sort of ground control points. And those ground control points have to have some sort of higher level GPS data than your standard drone. So your standard drone uses, you know, GLONASS system or just a standard GPS system. In order to get better data, you've got to have something like an RTK GPS, which I believe stands for real-time kinetic GPS. Let me um, look this up really quick. Definition. Um, or you could use a system that is a PPK uh, GPS, which is a military-grade GPS. I was right. Real-time can, can No, I was kind of right. Real-time kinetomatic satellite navigation. So hmm. RTK GPS is going to provide a better detail on a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. So... He's asking about propeller arrow points. Propeller arrow points are actually a pretty useful tool. They are about two foot squares. And uh, propeller built in the GPS system into these propeller arrow points, which you can carry around with you. There are pros and there are cons to them. Pro, you can run over them with a tractor or a 7,700 pound vehicle, like the one that's parked outside, and they'll still work. I learned that the hard way. (laughs) Um, But a con about them is that you actually have to buy 10 of them for $6,000 in order uh, to actually buy them. You used to be able to buy a smaller amount, but you can't buy a smaller amount than 10. Maybe you can go in on it with your friends and share them. But the other downside is, is that once you buy them, it does come with one year of unlimited processing, but you can buy other RTK GPS systems that you don't actually have to pay for the processing itself, which helps out. Another issue, essentially, you also have to understand that if you have an RTK GPS receiver on the ground versus, say, 10 feet up or 8 feet up, the overall relative accuracy and strength of the signal could be decreased by obstructions around that signal. It's the same thing where if you are flying over water and you're flying really, really low over the water, the distance in which you can fly is a lot lower than the distance you could fly if, say, you were 100 feet over the water. It's just essentially normal... um, I'm, I'm probably screwing this up. It's normal physics of radio waves, essentially. Standard log normal decay is the technical term for it. But essentially, you'll get better results if you use something that's higher off of the ground. Hmm. So pro, they're very easy to travel with. You can just stick them on a site, 
and then put a uh, put them over a fake quote unquote GCP, and then you can leave the fake GCPs out on the site. If you're doing um, a standardized progression where you're going out every couple of weeks uh, or a recurring progression mm-hmm. is probably a better word for it. So it it is really convenient and useful in that way. But six thousand dollars for ten of them is a whole lot of money, um, sure. if you ask me. Especially when you can get a system called the Reach RS, which is by a company called Emlid. That's E M L I D dot com, and their Reach RS system is an RTK uh, GLONASS receiver that can also be used as a GCP. The beauty of this receiver is that it is only seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. Although you are going to have to buy some sort of um, surveying pole or um, f- tripod or something to put the actual unit on top of to get your measurements. Now, they recommend buying two units for maximum accuracy, uh, but it is possible to just get one unit and then move around the area and get all the information that you need. Right. Someone stated that the accuracy of the Reach RS unit was hold on let me where is it where is it where is it it was like seven to 13 millimeters seven yeah seven millimeters horizontal and 13 millimeters vertical which is significantly better than if you were to just do normal drone mapping with a phantom where your horizontal could be off by hundreds of feet and we've actually seen it before so it could be a significant problem so can just can we back up just a little bit and talk about ground no. control points? Not to too much depth, um, not not necessarily one on one level, but when we talk about the um, propeller arrow points and their big squares, the reason that you would use one of those versus just uh, a square piece of wood is because you don't with the piece of wood that you've created your own square and your own to use as your own GCP, you're now going to have to figure out the coordinates for that. Right? So Is that okay. accurate? So, for example, if you wanted to have fake GCPs and put the MLID Reach RS system on it and then keep the fake GCPs there, you could, but you would have to correct for the distance of the height of the GCP itself and the height of the fake GCP. Okay. So you could still do the whole, like what we did with our construction mapping class, where we had a fake GCP, threw the arrow point on top of it, and just left the fake GCPs out there. Okay. So... Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if that an- is answering your question, though, as far as the benefit of arrow points. Well, I guess what I'm saying is there there would be another way where you could, to use your term, use a fake GCP that is your real GCP, but you've just figured out with some other method what the coordinates are for that particular GCP, short of going and buying something like the Reach RS or the propeller arrow no, points. Yeah, you right? still need some way to measure its position in space. So the fake GCP is just a piece of plywood with four 12-inch square tiles on it. No, I understand repre- you need a method to measure, but could it be a way other than buying something like this? Yeah, there right. are um, uh, Trimble systems. Trimble is what's normally used in surveying. Right. They're highly accurate. Uh, I'm not sure what They're they They're probably cost, pretty though. expensive too, though. Um, Trimble... Trimble. Because the, I guess one of the things I'm kind of getting at here is that the propeller arrow points, it makes it a pretty simple process. Basically, you push a button, it records it, right? Mm-hmm. So that is it, it makes it nice and simple. That is correct. Let's see. Oh, man. Trimble's website blows. Oh, my gosh. What a nightmare. We're not going to figure out what it costs quickly. I don't think so. This goes to show. Probably tells us that they're really expensive. And this website was made by a geriatric. So, sorry. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> here we it's go. A lot, of, a lot of good information. California surveying, mapping, okay, mapping, surveying, featured products. Well, well, I don't want to chat with you. Ooh, they've got this aerial system. Look at that. A surveying company selling drones. Hmm, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so they don't have the R10. You can't even, they have the R1, and you they still won't tell you how much it costs. All right, Request I give up. Request a quote. Trimble, Trimble, R10, co- yeah, price. Give me the price. Holy cow, $15,999. 
Okay, so short of using, see, that makes something like the, <laughs> the arrow points seem relatively inexpensive because you're going to need something like that in order to use just a piece of plywood, right? Yes. I mean, like, okay. the piece of plywood is just a reference. You have I, to no, take a measurement of course. to put the piece of plywood down. I understand. Okay. I'm just saying, what are, the other, what are the methods of taking that measurement? Is there something you can buy for 500 bucks to take a measurement I'm sure and there use is. plywood? You could use your phone, but you're not going to get an accurate data. Understand. No, I, yeah, of course. So I've actually seen someone do that, and I looked at them like they were insane. <laughs> I'm not going to mention no, that. No, no, no. And of course, when I asked that question about finding something for a relatively low cost to do the measurements... That assumes that it would be something that's accurate enough to be useful, but it sounds like which is why I mentioned the Reach RS. Right. Okay. So that yeah. brings us full circle back to the Reach RS. Yes. Thank you for letting me go down that road. I'm it so helps confused me right now. I hope you're not confused. <laughs> this actually helped me a lot going around in that circle. <laughs> I'm like, what is he trying to say about the cardboard here? I think they understand what I'm trying to I mean, say. Plywood. I, anyway, I think they understand. On that bombshell, if that not, is gonna... tell us. <laughs> tell yeah. me, I'm crazy. On that one, the first time. That is going to do it Paul's for us done. today. My name is Paul. <laughs> and I'm Rob. This and is we're out of here. Astro and you. Well, look, the camera's almost done uh, recording to you. Anyway, that's going to do it for us, guys. Bye. <laughs>